Hello everybody. So today we're going to make this beautiful pumpkin stitch. Um, this example is a border I have for a blanket I'm making, the Cromwell blanket, and you can find that free pattern linked below. Um, but we're going to be learning how to make this today. So per usual, we're going to start with a slip knot. And I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook for this. Um, this one's bamboo. So we're gonna, for this example, I'm going to chain 20 stitches. So there's my chain of 20. So you can um, use however many uh, foundation stitches that you want to use, um, but just make sure it's in a multiple of four because the pumpkin is gonna be four stitches long. Um, you could definitely do a couple extra uh, stitches if you'd like and maybe put a, a double crochet, black double crochet there um, on the side of the pumpkin if you wanted. Um, but this stitch um, is a, a repeat of four. So we're gonna add two more chains for our turn here, and then we're gonna crochet into, we're gonna do a single crochet into the second loop from the chain. So we have our first, and we're just gonna go ahead and single crochet all the way across. And I am using black for this, but you can use um, whatever accent you color you would like. Um, I just think black helps the pumpkins really stand out, but I think purple would also be really cool and spooky. Alright, so I've reached the end here and this is a good opportunity to count your stitches. So you can just count the V's at the top. Awesome, I have 20 and um, I'm just going to chain one to turn my work and then we are going to do one slip stitch here and then you are going to, we're going to start doing our modification of an arcade stitch. So for this you're going to chain three and then you are gonna skip two stitches here and slip stitch into that third stitch. And then slip stitch again, chain three, skip two stitches and slip stitch into that third stitch. Lost my stitch there, just pick it back up so skip two into the third and another slip stitch two three skip two slip stitch into the third slip stitch into the next stitch and chain three one two three slip stitch into that last stitch and then we're actually gonna skip this last uh, slip stitch at the beginning and just slip a uh, chain from that slip stitch in into the third to get our correct count. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our black and pull through and switch to orange. With orange, we're going to go ahead and start with our slip knot again. 
and we're gonna do a standing double crochet into this first loop here. So this is going to be kind of like um, creating a granny square, but a bit different. So we've got our standing double crochet, and then you're gonna double crochet three more into here. And I am using US terms here. So usually in a granny square, after you had completed your little section, you would chain one, but we're not going to be chaining any today in order to keep our correct stitch count. So we'll just double crochet directly into that next loop, and you'll double crochet four. Again, not chaining any, just going directly into that next loop and double crochet four. So there we have the start of our pumpkins here, and we have five groups of four, so that brings us back to a 20 stitch count, so that'll help our work lay flat. And we're going to go ahead and cut off our orange and pull it through and switch back to black. And if you'll notice as well, I'm not going to be turning my work at all. This, there's going to be a back side and a front side to your pumpkin, so make sure to choose whatever side you think looks more pumpkin-y. Um, the extra stitches in the kind of uh, faux arcade stitch here um, is going to add some extra volume, some roundness to your pumpkins. Um, so you can choose either side. This side has a bit more puffiness, and this side um, there's a bit more of an indent here. Um, so I think I'll actually go with the puffy side on this one. Um, just add a little extra volume to our pumpkins here. And if you'd like to kind of add a black border to the side of your pumpkin stitch, this is a good time. Um, so I'll just go ahead and do a standing double crochet on the side. Um, so that our pumpkins are nicely kind of enveloped there. Um, and then you are going to slip stitch into the back loop of your pumpkin. So you're going to do slip stitch all the way across. But um, when you come to the pumpkin gap, you're actually going to do a half double crochet into that gap. And you could absolutely do a single crochet if you'd like. I just think that half double crochet adds a nice thickness um, and really separates those pumpkins pretty well. So you're going to want three slip stitches in between every half double crochet. So you are going to be skipping one slip stitch. So you won't be slipping into that next one. Half double crochet and go ahead and do that all the way across. And again, you can just do a double crochet on the end here to kind of enclose your pumpkins. All right, so there's our first layer and we're gonna go ahead and cut and tie off and switch to our green. All right, so we are going to be slip stitching into the back black stitch. 
and you're going to do two slip stitches. You're going to be doing our modified alpine stitch, so you're going to yarn over. Then we're going to go ahead and go through one loop, kind of like a front post, um, of each of the two middle orange double crochets. Yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through all three loops. So that's going to be giving us our, um, our stem of our pumpkin. And then you're just going to skip one slip stitch and go into that next one. And then slip stitch two more for the next pumpkin. And do your modified alpine front post stitch. So find some middle loops there. And it doesn't really matter which ones, you just want it to be pretty consistent throughout all of your pumpkins and some can be a little bit more difficult than others. But you're going to want to make sure to pull up your yarn when you're doing this so you're not getting any folding over. Skip one and go into the next one. Slip stitch and then go ahead and start your next pumpkin. So slip stitch two. Modified alpine, front post stitch, so find two loops in the middle of your next pumpkin, pull up your yarn, and pull through all three loops. So you'll go ahead and do that to the end, and I'll meet you there. Alright, so we have finished our stem, and we're just going to go ahead and cut, pull through, and switch back to black. Alright, start with your slip stitch again, or sorry, your slip knot, and we are going to um, do actually a single crochet into these green slip stitches. And just do a single crochet into the green all the way across. And it's going to um, hide the green line in between the pumpkins for the most part. There's going to be some speckling, some little polka dots, but it is going to maintain your stem. So go ahead and single crochet all the way across and I'll meet you there. Alright, so there is our completed first row of pumpkin stitch. And you can absolutely use this for borders, on blankets, on sweaters, um, or you could keep going and make this into a, a cute scarf, maybe do a few rows of pumpkin stitch and then do your solid color until the next end. Um, but I'll go ahead and do um, maybe one more row so you guys can see what it looks like stacked. Alright, so I did another row here and I went ahead and did a quick steam block on this and also wove in all of my ends. Um, but you can see that the pumpkins uh, align nicely with the one below. Um, and here is the back side. So it's not a double sided pattern. So you will have a front side and a back side. That is something to keep in mind. Um, additionally, I have some other notes. Um, if you are going to be um, doing a border of double crochet along the side here, make sure not to um, single crochet um, into that double crochet when you're doing your single crochet row. Um, if you wanted to as well, you could definitely carry your colors up the side. Um, you could definitely, I think black would carry really nicely in this project. Um, since you do have a backside as well, um, it would just be, it would save you from weaving in some ends here. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's pretty nicely square. Um, and I had, I started with 20, ended with 20. Um, that is something you want to, um, make sure of when you have completed or when you're in the middle of your project that you're keeping your stitch count. So I do have 20 stitches along the top, 20 on the bottom. Um, I would definitely recommend if you, well, obviously you haven't tried this stitch before, <laughs> um, but uh, for your first time, I would definitely swatch this and just do a test crochet to make sure 
um, that you're keeping your stitches, that you understand what's going on, because it can be a little bit complex keeping those stitch counts. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to pop that down in the comments below. Um, I will be adding the free pattern that goes along with this for the Cromwell blanket. And I'll go ahead and give you guys just a sneak peek. So it's a pretty easy pattern. It's just going to be um, granny squares in green, orange, and purple. And it's just going to be a nice lap size blanket. And then the border will be in our lovely pumpkin stitch. So really easy, fun Halloween crochet. Um, and please uh, tag me if you end up making anything with the pumpkin stitch. Um, I, my handle is at pinkstone threads. Um, and I would just love to see what you guys come up with. Thank you so much. See you guys later.